Good evening, everyone. TSP Television proudly presents high school girls basketball. Tonight, an early season tri-metro match. Guaranteed to be a lot of fun. Very close, very intense. De La Salle and Minnehaha Academy, two big rivals in the tri-metro as they look for early season positioning in their conference and perhaps section play. Now let's take a look at our keys to the game. We'll start with De La Salle. First, they want to play solid defense. They score about 75 points a game. But in their two losses, it's been defense that has been the issue. And so look to be solid in that aspect. They want to execute on offense. If I heard a nickel for every time I someone said that, I'd be a millionaire. But it's a classic key. You're not going to win if you can't put points on the board. And finally, they're going to need to consistently work hard for the entire game, particularly the defense. I spoke with Lisa von Steinberg last night, the assistant head coach. And she mentioned De La Salle, great on offense, but on defense, they tend to get lackadaisical at times, and so they need to continue to put pressure on for all 36 minutes. Yeah, because Mini Ha Ha, and part of their strategy is going to try to make De La Salle adjust in their defense after every possession. And with that in mind, that could uh, throw a kick into the armor of De La Salle's plan of having a consistency in their defense plan. The other keys to the game for Minnehaha are to cut the backdoor option. De La Salle, fast team, they'll use that a lot, and then handle De La Salle's pressure defense, as you mentioned. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the starting lineups. We'll begin with the visiting De La Salle Islanders. It's Alina Starr, Claire Thomas, Tyshana Johnson, Chanel Dickinson, and Mariah Abdonane, Tyshana Johnson, the key player for De La Salle. She scored 36 points in a double overtime win against Minnetonka, then took two games off to care for her brother who suffered a heart attack. We'll talk more about that as the game goes on. Minnehaha, their starters are Jenna Halston's guard, Rachel West, Gabby Steenstra, Serena Baker, and Caitlin Adams. Caitlin Adams, the team's top scorer among returning players, but they got a big boost when former De La Salle player Serena Baker transferred to the Red Hawks. Baker leading the team with nearly 20 points per contest, and Adams right behind with 15.2. So Minnehaha has plenty of offensive options of their own. Well, as I mentioned, it's an early season conference game, but I spoke with Josh Thurl last night and De La Salle, same mentality. While getting a conference title is nice, only the state champions are remembered. And so for them, their key is to take home a state title in 2A and 3A and get a big tri-metro representation. Minnehaha wearing the red jerseys. De La Salle wearing white. The officials for tonight's game, Dwayne Perry, Todd Champ, and John Manley. And Tyshana Johnson with the first possession for the Islanders. That's Dickinson. Again, De La Salle without Maya Lloyd. She was averaging 14 and a third points per game in the three games she got in before suffering an ACL tear against Lakeville North. She's done for the year. Thomas is starting in her place. Pumps inside, Dickinson will go to the line. And when Lloyd got injured in that game against Lakefield North, going into the second half of that game, they only scored four points in what would be a huge blowout. 64-29 to be precise. Dickinson averaging 5.2 points per game. Gets on the board. De La Salle throughout the years a team that you'll usually find in the state tournament, but they have difficulty closing out in basketball and football. This last fall, the football team got to the semifinals in Class 3A before they got knocked out. And last year, the same De La Salle team lost in the semifinals against Hill Murray. They would eventually go on to a third place finish in a 31-1 record. And under De La Salle's former head coach, Brian Fry, more of the same. They got all the way to the final in 2008 but they lost to Dottino Grace. And a similar story with the boys team. We have a foul on a line of star. That's the first of the game for the Islanders. So we have the boys playing against each other over in De La Salle tonight. 
Last year they had a boys-girls doubleheader. The girls preceded the boys. We covered the boys game that year. That was a great contest. We've got Minnehaha Academy's boys team on the schedule later this season when they head to St. Paul Central. It will stay De La Salle ball. It's 2-0, the Islanders lead. Big crowd on hand, traveling call on Thomas. Thomas, only a sophomore, and so explain perhaps to me the pressure and the challenges she will get in having to start for Maya Lloyd, who was doing really well on the offensive side. Yeah, Lloyd was a key, uh, well, key part last year to uh, De La Salle's offense, but with uh, Lloyd's second knee injury, She's actually going to have to really step it up this time to fill in her shoes right now. Baker tried to feed to Adams, couldn't do it. De La Salle ball. For three, that's a Donane, short rebound Adams. Adams heading to Division I Liberty University next season when she graduates. Home of the Flames. Big South Conference power. Among her list of finalists was Creighton. The foul is on Rachel West, which happened after Donane got her steal. Star cross court to Thomas. Donane finds the hole and punches through for the basket. Despite getting stuck in the corner, they're able to deliver the ball to the hole and get the two. Well, interesting from De La Salle so far. They're known for an up-tempo, pressure-type game, and they've laid back on offense. But here's a fast break chance, and Tyshana Johnson puts it in with the assist from Donane. Just like that, four points right there. Show, 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 short, short time. De La Salle scoring his first six points of this game. There's Baker, the De La Salle transfer. Feeding to Adams. Adams can't finish. And the rebound to Adonine. There is a transfer rule in the high school league where you have to sit out unless you stay within your district. And I suppose that's the joy about having two trimetro powers in the same city. You don't have to change districts, so you don't have to sit out. A loophole for you there. <laughs> Adams with the steal, and there's Baker again. She needs help, though. She used up her dribble. Find Steenstra. And you'd think playing with De La Salle formerly, that would be an advantage for Minnehaha, having first-hand experience in knowing how De La Salle operates their offense and defense. Star picking up her second foul, and Baker got a lot of time last year with the Islanders. I talked with Thoreau about that, and he said it was great to have Baker on the team. It's an interesting side plot because of the rivalry and the transfer, but... In particular, his top scorer, Rachel Hansen, graduated and went to Concordia St. Paul for college, and Baker filling in quite nicely. Adams having trouble finding her shot. That time, Dickinson with the board, and Johnson can't put down the two. Adams again with the rebound. She's six foot five. She's going to win a lot of those battles in the glass. Steenstra stops, pops, too strong. And Mimi Haha is having trouble capitalizing on these. Missed opportunities to gain points every time they get the ball back from De La Salle so far early on. Claire Thomas gets called for her first personal foul of the game. Timeout, Minnehaha Academy. So we mentioned in the open, Tyshana Johnson playing with a lot of fire as of late. As we mentioned, her brother suffered a heart attack uh, about a week or so ago, he's doing fine, and he's actually in attendance tonight. She took a couple games off to uh, be with her brother, as I imagine any relative would. And it's not just the two Johnsons that really felt the sting of it. Both are related to head coach Faith Johnson-Patterson, Tyshana being her niece and Jarvis being her nephew. 
and also the whole team felt it as well because the incident happened the day before their devastating loss against Lakeville North. Then Johnson responded with a thrilling game in Minnetonka, or against Minnetonka at the breakdown tip-off classic. And now she's back in the lineup. Adonine with the steal. Baker was looking for something. And once again, we see Miniaha having trouble trying to capitalize on these opportunities and find, trying to figure out a way to stop De La Salle's defense. We talked earlier at the beginning of the game that De La Salle would have to work on the consistency on defense. It looks like right now, starting off, they're not having any serious problems in that execution. That will send Thomas to the line, averaging 6.8 points per game. And the thing with Johnson, obviously, you don't plan for heart attacks or injuries to begin the season, but the way they responded is not backing down at all, and that's been a staple of Faith Johnson Patterson's teams for years. Just tells you that nothing's going to stop De La Salle unless it's the opponent. Yeah, victory is probably it's probably a test of how you perform when you're up against the wall, and De La Salle has shown so far in the season that they can to that challenge and get victories. Mini ha ha ball. They've gone four minutes and 12 seconds without a field goal and without a point. But De La Salle only up 7-0 in that stretch. Johnson stolen from Adams. Here she comes. She'll get two points. And just right there, that was just a brilliant move there, getting the ball back. Johnson, only a sophomore, saw a lot of playing time last year as a freshman with the Islanders. Miniha had a similar situation in their match last year against De La Salle here, and then the Red Hawks came back, made it a game. Foul is on Adonine. Hopefully, Minnehaha can get some points on the board right here. Here at the free throw line. They're only down nine, which is nothing in basketball. Steenstra deflected, and Adams got the board, but she couldn't clean it up. And this time it will go De La Salle's way. But they with Mini Haha. They're getting a lot of open looks. They're just not falling right now. But you have to imagine, as soon as they start getting some looks, they'll get on a run. Yeah, it's still only a three possession game, so they're still well in within reach right now. Adams with the block. And a foul against De La Salle. It's going against Thomas. And De La Salle down to their last to give. We have a substitution. Natalie Ewell, the 6'1 sophomore center, is stepping in. Going in for Claire Thomas. And being up so early right now, De La Salle will have to work in their discipline and not try to lose control and give up fouls like that. Thirteen oh five remaining. And another Minnehaha turnover. I was going to say, De La Salle started out like this in their first game of the season against St. Paul Central at the Pat Patterson tip-off tournament. And then St. Paul Central rallied, won that game 79-72 in what was the biggest upset of that first weekend. Traveling call on a Dickinson. Yeah, and hopefully they will have learned from that experience right there. And I'm fairly confident that there is a uh, plan in place should they find themselves looking in that situation again. Well, the thing with high school basketball, while there may not be the parity as, say, Division I men's basketball, as Halston Squad finally removes the goose egg for the Red Hawks, there are some games that will surprise you, especially early in the season when not everyone is informed. Star out to Adonine, and Adonine makes a tough shot work. In, in these early games, it's a lot about momentum that people give it credit for because a lot of teams will go in having success the previous season and they might get overconfident and not perform as well. And teams can come in and look for the upset, just like what happened with De La Salle earlier on this season. And a block from Adams who got the last basket for Minnehaha Academy. And she picks up her first field goal. And a traveling call on Steenstra. Once again, De La Salle's pressure defense getting to the Red Hawks. Yeah, it looks like it's not cracking right now. 
I wouldn't want to go up against it. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> what was your line? Hey, look, that's me out there. Exactly. Ad Adonine missed the jumper. And to explain, we were talking more about that for football. Yeah, anytime Sower makes a bad play at a professional level, it actually looks like me out there. <laughs> well, on Monday, you just might fit in with the Vikings Bears over at TCF in the rock hard field. Baker, yeah. bullseye! And you see right there why she's been a key contribution ever since her transfer from De La Salle and why this game's gonna be real close and why right now they're looking to get back into this. Timeout, De La Salle Johnson took a hard fall, but she's up, appears to be okay. But like we said, De La Salle scoring the first nine points. Since then, Minnehaha has put up a 7-2 run. Yeah, like I was saying earlier just now, De La Salle cannot get overconfident right now like with making fouls and giving turnovers because it's still early and both teams have a lot of energy right now. And speaking of De La Salle, their team is very involved, not just in basketball, but most of their students are involved in some extracurricular activity. Most of them usually take on two or more. Several of the players participated in the annual Christmas choir that happened not too long ago. And Tanny Britz, who is a reserve for De La Salle, played the role of Mrs. Claus for the dramatic portion, while other players participated in the choir, orchestra, or band. I wonder if the other players played elves. Oh. <laughs> uh, they look a little big in terms of your classic or your quintessential elf, so to speak, but... I wasn't there, so I can't say who was what, but... How often are you going to find a girls basketball player playing Mrs. Claus and going back out in the court? It's just nice to see, because you're only in high school one time. Do it all. <laughs> yeah, this is a time for the lives where they can do that. Adonime with the steal and the feed to Johnson, who scores the layup. She has six. Johnson played as an eighth grader for Minneapolis North. In fact, several of the eighth graders on that team moved over to De La Salle when Faith moved, and that's just a sign of how strong a coach Faith has been over the years. She's won five state titles in Class 3A, all for Minneapolis North. Hoping to make it six this year. And she was close to making it six last year. And De La Salle, they're doing it with a younger team, but they do get the foul. It's going to go against Dickinson, and that will send Baker to the line. Yeah, and being a younger team, they can only get better this season and the season after. And either this year or next year, they should be in prime position as one of the top contenders for state. De La Salle always on the short list of contenders every season, but so is Minnehaha as Baker drew the foul. Misses the back end. But a lane violation will give Baker another chance. De La Salle also out of fouls to give. That's the consequence of the pressure defense. You're going to get called for a few more fouls. And Baker makes her second chance count on her second free throw. Star kicks out. Ewell can't put down the mid-range day. This one's coming back, it looks like. Ten thirty remaining in the first half, and we have a foul on De La Salle. It's against Yule, and as we mentioned, De La Salle now in the penalty. So this is where Minnehaha can keep things close. Yeah, they can make it a two-possession game right here with just one basket. And they still have three fouls to give. This is Halston's guard. It's a one and one situation, and Halston's guard misses. Johnson going to Dickinson. Out to Adonine. Now you see Minnehaha shutting down the perimeter. Yeah, it looked like the defense was asleep initially on in the game, but it looked like it's starting to come together. Basketball is a game of runs, as we mentioned, especially with the halves that they've put into place for the last five years. That rule, as Star missed, 
and Adam fitted the board. That rule was put in place at the start of the 2005-06 season. Before it was eight minute quarters. And since the switch to halves, I don't mind that rule. In fact, I think it's a little more competitive now than the quarter situation. Baker, short, rebound to Donane. As you don't get as many breaks now, you get those moments to build up runs. And Donane with the roll. She was able to get it past Adams in that play right there. Wide open, Red Hawk, but she's short. That was Andrea Scharf. And that was just a bad shot from beginning to end right there. Knew it wasn't going to go in from the moment she let go. Adonine, in and out. How many rebounds does Adams have? I don't know, but um, I think I'm going to lose count. I already have lost count. And a foul on Dickinson, so more free throws coming. And Adams is one of the key players in this for this team. She only has 61 points going into this game and has been averaging 15.2 points per game. Thomas is going to go back in, giving Dickinson a rest. Well, so far, your first game calling the match in your career. It seems like you're uh, rolling along. Yeah, at least I'm trying to. <laughs> Uh, everyone out there. Steenstrom missed a free throw. Adams with the cleanup. If she catches fire, Minnie Haha could pose big trouble for De La Salle. Yeah, she can do it all. She can do offense and she can do defense. But and we just saw it. And Donane with the three. She has nine. Adonine, no slouch either. Averaging 11.8 points per game. Mini ha ha ball. That almost went our direction. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to say, uh, having a courtside view, you got to look out. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a good idea if, like, in my first night here on the job, they'd knock the table over. Well, so far, the roof is holding up. That's what I'm concerned about. Yeah, I don't think this roof is there supporting us, so I think we're safe. It looks pretty <laughs> reinforced with Baker the steel. Baker for three. Bullseye! And the ex De La Salle player does it again. Eight points for Baker. Adonine travels. You'll see that a lot in high school. Players will take the step before they dribble. And there's another penalty that did not go in favor of De La Salle. They could build up the lead, but if they keep making plays like this, they're going to keep this game close. They could even possibly fall behind. They're only up by four. Adonine went for the strip, but Baker was there. Deenstra, travel. No! She drew the foul. That's against Thomas. That's her third. I thought she had traveled, but we couldn't see it from here. Thomas must have grabbed her. I don't know if you got a good better angle. If you got a better angle on that than I did, but. No, I think I have the same angle as you from here, so I really couldn't see anything. Well, there's no review system anyway for high school basketball, so the calls that the officials make are the calls everyone has to live with. Yeah, you won't see any red flags in basketball because we don't even see <laughs> yellow flags in the first place at all. Well, as long as we don't have that situation that we did in, I think, in Florida, where a, a high school boys senior didn't like a technical that was issued against him, carrying call on star, and he took two cheap shots at the official who called the foul. It's online. I, I've heard of coaches getting mad, but I've never heard of players, actually. Well, he went for a punch, and then he just toppled the guy. He just, uh, that was an uncalled for move. I don't think we'll see that here. No, these two teams are far too smart for anything like that. But. Johnson finds Starr, but Starr can't get through. But she does find Thomas in the paint. And that was just De La Salle patience. That set up the basket. Adonine with the block, but she can't block it a second time, and Sharp gets her first field goal. 
Sharp, known as a quick defender, getting her first two. Thomas just, drives short. We just saw Audenene take it to the middle, and I thought she was going to go for the shot there, but she decided to pass it on for an attempt at a long shot. New player in for Minnehaha. We'll get to her in a second. But staying strong with the three. It's a one-point game. Big shot right there, and we're seeing Minnehaha coming together on offense and learning how to figure out how to operate against this pressure defense. Three point basket, Mariah Adonane. Mariah Adonane responds with her, a tray of her own. That's her second. She has a dozen. And it's tit for tat at Bergstrom Court here at Minnehaha Academy. Yeah, just when the Red Hawks think they're getting a break, De La Salle answers and calls to the occasion. And speaking of uh, Tani Britt, she steps in the game. So the girl who played Mrs. Claus at the annual Christmas concert will show her basketball prowess here. Number 31 is Nicole Nipper for Minnehaha. Adams has yet to set out. And Maybe she'll get some gifts in the form of baskets when she's out here on the court now. Three second call on Minnehaha. Halston's guard going back in for the Red Hawks. Dickinson going back in for the Islanders. So far, this game build as everything it would be. But we still have a long way to go. Alston's guard trips. That leaves an open to Donane, but she can't put it down. Offensive board right there for De La Salle. That was Thomas, but Dickinson was blocked by Adams. She is going to be a monster on defense no matter who she faces. Adams, no good. Picked up by Brits, looking for Johnson. Finds her, and Johnson with the kiss off the glass. Johnson kind of bobbled the uh, breakaway pass right there, but even despite that, she still gets the two. Isn't that the joy of basketball? You don't have to worry about an incomplete pass yeah. stopping the play. <laughs> 5.02 remaining, we've got a timeout. 25-19 is the score. Now, again, we talked about an early season tri-metro game. Normally, these two teams don't play each other until January. And so many ha-has end. Josh Thurow, I talked to him about that. He said it's going to be a good pre-test to see where he's at. The conference games are important, but he said everyone remembers who won state. So that puts the conference titles in perspective. Yeah, and speaking of January, um De La Salle is not going to play their next game, which is against Brooklyn Center on the 4th. But Minnehaha has to play actually coming up against North Branch on Tuesday. So they, it's very, it's more important for them right now to uh, keep the momentum going into the next game if they want to stay near the top of the pack in the Trimetro area. And with De La Salle, I spoke with Lisa von Steinbergs about this early season match. And she said it's good to do, especially if it helps us have less weeks in January and February, because their kids run semesters, so they have finals around mid-January. So it helps relieve some pressure. I'm certainly not complaining about this. <laughs> Jump ball, possession arrow favors Benihaha. Schools aren't too far apart either. Minnehaha on West River Parkway, right along the Mississippi River, and De La Salle on Nicolette Island, just outside downtown. I wonder if the teams took a boat to get here from De La Salle, but given that the river is pretty frozen right now, they might have even just skated down here on the river. Adams found an open sharp, and with the block was Dickinson. De La Salle covers a possible mistake. And Johnson with the steal. Here comes the transition. And De La Salle backs off. They're not in a hurry. They have yet to relinquish the lead, but it's come as close as one in this half. Johnson for three to the left. There's just no getting around Adams in the post, but Adonine steals another pass. 
behind the back layup, no good. And another rebound for Adams. I think Adams has magnets on her hand, and I think that ball is made of metal. Traveling call, Sharp doesn't like it. But Sharp used up her dribble, had nowhere to go. Dickinson, double team, finds Ritz, but she can't put it in. Halston's guard, one on one with Adonine, goes left, and Adonine disrupts her shot. Thomas stops, pops, too strong. Thomas loses it this time to Baker. Baker, double team, loses it right back to Bricks. Both of these teams right now are playing solid defense, as you see, because both teams haven't been able to capitalize on these mistakes and get points on. Thomas missed a three, mini ha ha ball. Star going back in. Steenstra to Adams, back out, Steenstra, in and out for three. The foul is called against Baker. 2.56 remaining in half number one. I love these mics, they're just giving us a lot of sounds of the game. <laughs> I'm all mic'd up actually, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Adonine missed. Good anticipation and Starr picks up the steal after Dickinson disrupts it. That now Starr goes to Dickinson and she gets the mid-range day. That was almost a mid-air interception steal right there. Through the legs to Adams. Halston Scar kicks out. Sistine Straw can't get the corner shot. Vila Sal ball with 2.11 remaining in half number one. We'll go to some pregame interviews that we conducted at halftime with assistant coach Lisa von Steinbergs of Vila Sal and Minnehaha Academy head coach Josh Thoreau. That's coming up at our halftime break. Brits from the corner. Too strong. Gets her own rebound, can't put it in. And Adams is fouled, which means she'll go to the line. It's a double bonus for Minnehaha. Yeah, and they'll be looking to get within five, hopefully, after these shots right here. It's a shame we don't have rebounding numbers. As I'd say Adams, she's got to be close to 10 if she isn't there already. <laughs> She watches out, she could have a double double tonight. She's put up a few blocks too, maybe a triple double. <laughs> West going back in. Adams missed the back end. The foul was on Brits, that is her first. Star out to Brits. Come on, move, move, move. In the closing minutes of the first half. Dickinson. No one there to catch the pass, it goes right into the seats. Miscommunication. They're worried about miscommunication on defense, but it looks like offense, that could pose a problem as well. Well, they're still working on communication. They're only six games in the season, and they've had to make a couple adjustments already. 
not having Johnson for two games because of the uh, medical situation with her brother. Baker, long three, but she's well short. And then Maya Lloyd's injury. So Gila Sound, not an ideal start, but they're making the most of it. And you can't complain about being ahead right before halftime. And we've got a slick spot on the court, and there's Liesel von Steinberg. So it looked like uh, contact went out. I'm not sure, yeah. Dickinson hanging onto her eye. Looks like one of her contacts went out. Well, hopefully it won't pose a problem. She can get back in the game. I think they'll get it back in or they'll resolve that situation. I don't see Dickinson being out for long. And De La Salle holding for the final shot with no shot clock. You can do that. Kill as much clock as you want. And in my experience running while wearing contact lenses, I've never actually had that happen, which is thankful. De La Salle looking to go into the locker room with at least a seven point lead. They'd like to increase it. Gilesau will make a move now. The Red Hawks trying to keep them deep as much as they can but when, before time's out. Ewell blocked by Adams, and that brings the first half to an end. Gilesau leading 27-20. Hi, everyone. Mike Peden and Sean williams White here with Minnehaha Academy coach Josh Thoreau. Josh, you're coming off the Class 2A state championship last year, 3-1 heading into tonight's game against De La Salle. So what are you going to be looking for in an early season contest within the Tri-Metro? Well, we're excited to play De La Salle. They're a great team, obviously, as a third place team in last year in Class 3A and rated number two this year. We're just looking to match their intensity, make sure that we don't back down and hopefully keep on building and uh, you know keep playing better every game. Now, speaking of getting better, it's something you did last season. It was talked about. We covered your mini Haha -Ha Kennedy game, which was a Bloomington Kennedy blowout, all of a sudden Minnehaha wins the Class 2A title. So what did you learn from that season that you'll be able to apply for the rest of your coaching career? We, we learned to stay patient, make sure that we don't, uh, you know, get too down when we, you know, drop a game in December or whatever, you know, and just keep working hard, improve every day. You know, we talked about getting a point better every practice and every game, so, and we did that. And what will De La Salle bring? You mentioned they're athletic, they're fast, and how will that help Minnehaha Academy as they get ready to play the 2A section opponents later? Well, what I always say is if you can handle a De La Salle defensive pressure, then you can handle anything we're going to bump into in our section. We won't play a team as athletic as them again this year probably. You know, So uh, you know, it, it helps us You know, it, for whatever positives we get against them. We know that we'll never see anything that tough the rest of the way. So it hopefully will be a, you know, a, a nice confidence boost for us. Well, good luck. Hopefully you'll get a confidence boost tonight. And who knows, we might see you back at Target Center in March. We'd be happy to be back in March. That'd be great. Good to speak with you again. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Minnehaha Academy coach Josh Thurow. And we're back with De La Salle assistant coach Liesel von Steinberg. Now, Liesel knows a thing or two about going the distance. She was a member of the 1994 undefeated Blake championship team in Class 2A. Now, But right now your focus is Minnehaha Academy tonight. And what is this tri-metro game going to bring that will help De La Salle later on for the 3-8 tournament? Well, uh, we look forward to tonight being a very intense matchup. Um, and it being a, an opportunity for our girls to come back and really show what they're made of. How is the team adjusting and handling uh, some early season obstacles? They lost Maya Lloyd, who was putting in 14 points a game to an ACL injury. And since then, they've won three straight games. How would you judge the response? You know, our kids are really resilient. Um, they've really come back strong. Even in the face of adversity, they refuse to give up, and we're just really proud of them. 4-2 coming into tonight's game. You had a 31-1 season, of course, last year. Yes. And where would you say the De La Salle program is going in only your second season, assuming the Islanders ship? Well, it, it's our objective um, to come out every night and compete, and we definitely um, instill in our kids the, um, the will to win, but also just the desire to play hard and to play team basketball. And so uh, this season is shaping up really nicely as far as the girls coming together as a team unit. Well, we'll see if how that unit comes together. This is going to be a great game, a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for taking them to speak with us, and good luck. Thank you. De La Salle, assistant coach Liesl von Steinbergs. 
Welcome back to High School Girls Basketball presented by TSB Television as we continue our Tri-Metro matchup between Minnehaha Academy and De La Salle. I'm Mike Beaton here with Sean Williams-White. Let's take a quick look at the in-game box score from the first half. Mariah Adonane leads all players with 12 points. Uh, next on De La Salle is Tyshawna Johnson with eight, Chanel Dickinson with four, and Claire Thomas with three. Minnehaha, Serena Baker has eight points. Caitlin Adams has five, Gabby Steenstra has three, Halston Scarn and Scharf both have a pair. We'd like to remind you if you want to order a DVD copy of this, just visit grandstadium.tv or visit us at the sportsframe1.blogspot.com to find out how you can get a DVD copy of this program and all the future programs we'll bring to you on TSB television. We'd like to thank grandstadium.tv for providing an outlet to broadcast these games. De La Salle wearing the white jerseys, Minnehaha wearing the red. And for Minnehaha, biggest key seems to be finishing those shots. They had a lot of chances to get on the scoreboard. It took them about six minutes to do it. If they can get on a little run, find their shot in the second half, the clock could change. Yeah, and... Um I'm pretty sure at halftime, Coach Thoreau told the Red Hawks that this game was still well within reach and that De La Salle would still give up these balls back towards them and that if they want to win, they'll have to capitalize on those turnovers and fouls. And we're going to start the second half with a timeout by Minnehaha. <laughs> uh, so we get a little more time to chit-chat. We don't get any commercial breaks. So you're talking about Josh Thoreau, the head coach for Minnehaha. You saw him at halftime, but he's had experience on both sides of the ball. He was an official before he took the head coaching spot at Minnehaha Academy, and he still referees games, but he only does boys basketball. He will not do a girls game to, out of uh, respect, out of courtesy, so no one accuses him of rigging the games or he, conflict of interest. And I think the refs feel even more pressure when they have to ref a game where he's one, one of the coaches because he has experience in <laughs> refereeing, so they have to do their job very well. Well, as he told me, as Dickinson missed the jumper, we have a foul on Minnehaha, or on De La Salle, I should say. Thoreau told me his goal is to make sure he gets the calls right so that no one yells at him for a questionable call. And I'm sure most referees have that goal but he's been doing it for 15 years. In fact, he was slated to uh, officiate some games at the boys' tip-off classic, but the blizzard had other ideas. So the Metrodome move wasn't the only casualty of last weekend's blizzard. I'm pretty sure there are lots of casualties out there in the whole area over the past weekend. <laughs> Speaking of casualties, well, this blizzard wasn't one. De La Salle took two snow days. Monday and Tuesday, they had off, carrying violation on Star along with the city districts. I tell you, I think I maybe had two snow days the entire career I was in the St. Paul School District. <laughs> you see, they get two snow days in a row. What gives? <laughs> considering I grew up in Texas, we had way more snow days than that than you actually did. <laughs> I suppose down in Dallas, an inch or two shuts everything down. Yeah, if you see at least an inch, everyone starts panicking, unlike here. Apparently, six inches doesn't make people scared at all, and school still goes on. Nope, just 15. Minnehaha wearing red, De La Salle wearing white. And Thurow was officiating. He wanted to head coach the baseball team, got that job, and then Lance Johnson moved over to the boys team after coaching the girls for several years, and... They asked Josh, hey, you want to do it? He took the job, and now he has a state title to his credit. Hey, he can do it all. It's not uncommon to see no, coaches do more than one sport. On. It's not just the students that take on more than one sport throughout the year. Kickball, so no turnover. When will we, by when will we have for Bo Jackson or Deion Sanders are coaching? That's the real question. <laughs> yes, the dual sport athletes, both playing in Major League Baseball and the NFL. I believe Jackson played with the Royals and the Raiders. Yes, and he also had a Heisman Trophy to his credit from Auburn University, which is playing in the national championship coming up soon. Steenstra drains her second tray of the game, and Minnehaha cuts the lead to four, and Deion Sanders 
played for several NFL teams and spent most of his playing career with the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, and there was actually some controversy when the Braves made the playoffs in the early 90s. He chose to play with the Atlanta Falcons that day instead of playing the playoff game with the Braves. Was that the 92 World Series or was that before? I believe that was 91. 91, okay. To which in the lock, Braves locker room, he threw champagne on Tim McCarver afterwards. Yes, I do remember that. But the Twins would get the last laugh, if I recall. Yes. <laughs> The last team to win a championship, which happened to be at the Metrodome, and that, I believe the roof held up for that game. <laughs> Dickinson cleans up the mess. That makes six so far for Dickinson tonight. <laughs> Nipper can't put it down. Nipper getting valuable minutes with this team. Minnehaha Academy not afraid to go young either. Baker picks up the missed shot and is fouled. Dickinson not happy with it, and that will be number three. Looked like she was about to go in flight there, a la Michael Jordan, but uh, De La Salle had other plans for her. Baker at 5-10. I don't know if she has the vertical that Jordan did in his playing days. <laughs> But Baker but, will get some free throws. But she does wear a number 23 like him. And she's also wearing a red jersey. Yes. <laughs> New player coming in for De La Salle. Corey Garner, 14, 5 for junior guard. Baker with 10. Star under pressure, uses the dribble, and Garner can't handle the pass. Having some uh, jitters initially coming out here on the court for the first time tonight. Halston's guard kicks out to Steenstra. This time Steenstra can't put it down from the corner. And Johnson with the rebound. Adonine. Traveled. Arguing her case with the official that she didn't go off her pivot. But again, calls they make are the calls you got to live with. Yeah, and hopefully with this call, Minnehaha looks to shrink the gap even more. They've come as close as one. They have yet to lead. Adams had a quiet first half. She didn't have a quiet first half defensively, though. Not defensively, no. She's the reason why the Red Hawks are still in this game. Star, count it! So that puts Star up on the board for the first time tonight. Fouls on Halston, scored her first. Unusual to see Star this quiet. Averaging 14.8 points per game coming into tonight. Completes a three point play. Adonine has passed her average. Baker, long three, no good. Jump ball, Minnehaha has the possession arrow. Another interesting move so far. I don't think Adams has stepped out of this game. She's been in there every minute. They do have a backup post, Natalie Stevens, but they're all electing not to use her yet. Adams, tough shot, but when you have a 6-5 frame, and you saw what she did, she kept her hands up. By not bringing them down, she makes De La Salle work even harder, and that utilizes her height advantage. Yeah, when she does things like that, that makes you see why coaches would be reluctant to take her out of the game. Garner's three, goes over the backboard.
you got to think she's going to make some big contributions at Liberty when she goes there next year. Liberty University located in Virginia, for those of you who are wondering, D1 mid-major. Lynchburg, Virginia, to be more precise. Actually founded by Jerry Falwell in the 70s. Baker with the and one. I had no idea Falwell founded that. Yeah, they actually so. retired his number. His number actually hangs in the rafters or on the jersey at the arena there. You know what you should do? You should go to PBS or someone and pitch to revive War in the World as Carmen San Diego. I swear you'd have the geographical knowledge down, especially on the sports end. <laughs> Baker completes a three-point play, and we have a two-point game. Adonine gets the layup. And once again, we see why Adonine has really been out there front and center for De La Salle in offense tonight. 14 points for Mariah. Halston's guard looking for Adams. Tough shot. And the point. With a basket here, this would put Adams in double digits tonight, points wise. And we don't have an official rebounding staff, but both of us believe if she scores the next point, it will be a double double. Claire Thomas will sub in. This is like the days back in the NFL when they didn't record stat sacks as statistics. I believe that was 82 when they first started doing that. They do record rebounds, it just, Not here. they don't post them like, online. Yes. That's 10 for Adams. That puts her at a tie for the most points tonight for Minnehaha. Baker has 13. I stand corrected. Don't worry about it. We won't hold it against you. This isn't Jeopardy. <laughs> yes, I don't have to start every sentence with what, who, or why, or when. <laughs> One point game, and Garner's shot is short. Rebound Nipper, and the Red Hawks have a chance to take their first lead of the game. Adams inside, and she draws the foul. It will go against Thomas. And this is what I was talking about before the half started, where you see Minnehaha now taking advantage of these turnovers and fouls that have been committed by Gillis All. And get this, Thomas has four fouls. She will be disqualified with her next foul. And Dickinson's going to go back in. Thomas probably going to sit until late in this half. 12.48 to go. Caitlin Adams missed the front end. And the reason why she's going to Liberty compared to last year, Josh Thurl told me she's rebounding better, shooting very well at practice. And now we have a tie ball game. She has 11. This is the first tie since the opening tip. Adonine looking to change that, and she does. No one's been able to stop her inside. Yeah, going in, uh, we were all expecting Johnson to be out front and center, but Adonine has really been taking the lead tonight. Adams, no three, but Baker is there for the cleanup, and we're tied again. Right now, the Red Hawks trying to get a defensive stop here so they can go ahead and take their first lead of the game, maybe. They're in their man. Dickinson open. Can't put it down. Adams with another board. And again, Minnie with a chance to take the lead. We're talking about opportunities. Here is a key opportunity right here. And this is where we're seeing under the moment that they can do it. Adams too strong. Baker draws the foul. Johnson, I believe, will be called for it. No, it's against Garner. But Baker will be at the line. She has 15 points and has a chance to give Minnehaha their first lead of the game. Talk about side plots. 
and she does give the Red Hawks their first lead. This was a former De La Salle Islander. <laughs> this is actually poetic justice, her getting the point that gives him the lead. Well, it's not over yet. They're still 11-42. <laughs> and De La Salle, they fought through adversity already, getting upset by St. Paul Central to open the season, and then going through what they did with Lakeville North. Dickinson, blocked by Adams. That was a clean one right there. And then you see Adams going back, making sure Dickinson's okay. We mentioned it's a rivalry, but these players don't buy too much into it. Johnson gets the bounce back. She has 10. It's 38-37, De La Salle. Yeah, they're, they'll be friends off the court. They may be rivals on the court, but they're not out for blood. And that's the good thing about sports at this level is that, that even if though they're the fierce competitors right here on the court, they have mutual respect for each other. Adonine with the steal, two on two for the Islanders. And Adonine almost goes in. She was looking for the foul. That's a jump ball. Jump ball I will say this, I don't think we're gonna see a repeat of the Jets-Dolphins game from last weekend. Hopefully not. <laughs> I, I, I believe that these coaches are uh, well behaved and uh, <laughs> have a lot more class. Garner can't put down the three. I know the De La Salle's coaching staff pretty well. They're not the team that's going to run out and pull off a dirty trick, and now there's many ha-ha, especially when you have a 15-year official <laughs> leading the squad. Sportsmanship is on the top of their list. I can assure you that. From the players and the coaches, there's mutual respect everywhere here in high school basketball. New player in for Minnehaha. That's Sharp again. Fouls on Johnson and De La Salle out of fouls to give again. We talked about how that impacted the Red Hawks in the first half. Well now, instead of a seven or eight point lead, it's a one point lead. But Sharp can't put down the front hook and start with the board. Once you uh, don't have any more fouls to give, it becomes even more critical not to make mistakes because that gives the uh, opposing team more opportunities to get points. Adams lost her balance and got called for the travel. But that's all. That happens once in a while. You just lose balance. Not much you can do. <laughs> but Adams is not a player that's going to succumb to a mistake. <laughs> Even if she succumbed to a mistake, I'm pretty sure she'd learn from it. Well, she's battle-tested. Traveling call on Star, so that effectively cancels each other out. I don't think we have offset penalties in basketball, though. <laughs> Not offset penalties, but there are double fouls. <laughs> Kind of hard to have a do-over, though, in basketball. <laughs> Ten minutes remaining. Steenstra loses it to Johnson. Johnson finds Adonine again. Adonine making the inside her second home. 40-37, and it's stale. And a foul. It will go against Sharp, I believe. Minnehaha had three to give. And it looks like De La Salle's defense is back holding again, despite the problems they were having around halftime. Minnehaha in a more healthy situation as far as the fouls go. Johnson with the two. She was on the line. That gives her a dozen. So John Johnson may not be leading the team in scoring, but she's certainly not struggling either. That's a sign of a good player. You always tend to think that the best player is the player that scores the most points, but not always. A, a good player will score a lot of points, but a good player also contributes in other ways. And Halston's guard drives to the right side, gets a layup, timeout called with 9.14 to go in the second half. Now uh, we talked about De La Salle's coaching staff. 
Steinbergs and Faith and John Patterson, the husband and wife team, they've been together for many years over at Minneapolis North and now at De La Salle. But this year, De La Salle picked up another assistant coach, one of uh, Faith Johnson Patterson's protégés, Maya Johnson. Johnson was an assistant coach at North last year, moved over to De La Salle. And uh, Johnson was responsible for two of Minneapolis North's five titles in Class 3A. She was a state champion in 03 and 04, played her first year of college ball at St. Louis, then transferred to Michigan State. Suffered an ACL injury, I believe in her junior year, which limited her production, but she was voted team MVP her senior year when she graduated in 2009. And her goal is to become a head coach herself. She uh, played a little overseas ball at Germany, came back, didn't like it, now going back into coaching full throttle, and that's what she wants to do. She said eventually she wants to coach at the collegiate level. Well, she has good mentors around her. Well, her, her first, when you have a mentor like Faith Johnson Patterson, you're going to have building blocks. I mean, <laughs> Patterson's record over the years. <laughs> Foul on Minnehaha, illegal screen. That's on Adams. Johnson Patterson's accolades would be good enough to get a collegiate job if she wanted. Not many coaches can win five state titles <laughs> and come very close to winning more. We talked about De La Salle's run last year. She finished runner-up in the 2009 tournament when she was at Minneapolis North. They lost to St. Michael Auburnville. So if she doesn't win, she usually comes very close. <laughs> it's very rare to not see here at Target Center come up. Not Adams. Getting, not getting state in the season's a disappointment. <laughs> Well, that's what De La Salle told me last year after the 31 and 1 record. There were people disappointed that they finished third. <laughs> they're Brits, like, they're no like, mid range jumper. They're like the Brazilian soccer team. Not winning a World Cup is a failure at a World Cup. Traveling call on Minnehaha. It's still a three point game, 42 39. And Minnehaha is no stranger to the state tournament either. Back in 08. Minnehaha and De La Salle, they played each other three times, of course, the two conference games. No backcourt violation because it's off an inbounds, and here comes the ball. <laughs> that was the, I was doing everything I could to shield you. Yes. I'm going to put myself on the line. No one cares about me. If I get a concussion, so be it. I'm replaceable. Forget watching on HD TV. This is the real being in the action. <laughs> Forget 3D television. Who needs 3D? <laughs> Adonine, again. She has 20, and I'm thankful she didn't send the ball in our direction. <laughs> now, I was going to say, Miniha and De La Salle played each other a third time in the 08 season when the Red Hawks were a 3A school. They lost in the semifinal, but they have a lot of state tournament experience as well. It's not uncommon to see them at the Target Center come March. Well, they're both ranked very high in state in their respective classes, so that's a real statement right there. Adams, De La Salle not giving her easy shots. She does have 11, but her points have been earned tonight. Star, too strong. The foul's on Baker. And Minnehaha Academy out of fouls to give as well. So this changes everything. Both teams are going to now shoot free throws for the remainder of the game. Adonine for three. Short. Come on, Come on, Steenstra looking for Baker, but it's intercepted by Johnson. Johnson one on one. No good, but she's going to the line. We're talking about rankings. De La Salle, number two in 3A despite a 4-2 and two record. Number one is Hill Murray at 5-0. and oh. Benil St. Margaret's is behind at number three. Those were the three favorites before the season began in terms of state tournament contenders. Yeah, when Hill Murray 5-0 uh, and oh and undefeated, De La Salle could have as many wins as Hill Murray does right now if they can come out and win tonight. And try to make their case for why they should be ranked number one. And for Minnehaha in Class 2A, they 
or looking to stay at fourth right now in state. Minnehaha currently trailing Providence Academy, St. Peter and Bram. I saw Bram and Providence go at it in the girls' tip-off classic last week. Bram won on a buzzer beater from Austin Ng, who suffered an injury in the 2A final last year against Minnehaha Academy. So poetic justice for her in that sense. <laughs> Adams, again, struggling from the left side. Johnson made both free throws, and they have a seven-point lead, 6.28 to go. This could be De La Salle's run they were looking for. Johnson, air ball. And a foul's called. It's against De La Salle, so free throw's coming. Yeah, and you see right there, Baker looked like she was thrown down to the court almost while she was trying to grab the ball. That's on Dickinson. That is her fourth. So two Islanders with four fouls, Dickinson and Thomas. And Baker with 16 points will look to add two more and keep the pressure on De La Salle. You look at those rankings one more time. Benilde St. Margaret's in third. They were last year's 3A champions, beating Hill Murray in the final, scoring two baskets in the final minutes. In a manner reminiscent to UCLA and Gonzaga in the 2006 regional final. Yeah, in that uh, game, we remember Adam Morrison had a very emotional outburst at the end of the game. And Gus Johnson had one of his many uh, excitable calls. Yeah. But March Madness, this next year, won't be the domain of strictly CBS now, so. Not anymore. <laughs> State tournament, of course, will stay with GrandStadium.tv <laughs> and KSTC Channel 45. You can only hope, though, one day. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Star with the runner. She only adds five points, but those are two big ones. Halston's guard looking for Adams. They put at least two bodies on her all game. And she loses the ball. There's still time, but De La Salle with the edge. And Dickinson will step out in her place. Is Jasper McNeil, number 50. Star looking for McNeil. And it was last touched by Minnehaha. I'm just glad that ball didn't come back in our direction again. As long as it doesn't hit you. Yes. If it hits me, I'm fine. My head's <laughs> hollow. There's nothing in there. Five minutes. De La Salle killing clock, and they can with a seven-point lead. They're going to make Minnehaha move first. Adana Ney nearly loses the ball, picks it up, finds McNeil, who's blocked again by Adams. Yeah, there's no way going to get past Adams. But jumping that low for a shot. And a foul on Minnehaha. Adams thought she had another block. <laughs> but Sharp. How many blocks do you think that is for tonight? Five at least. She's definitely the player of the game for Minnehaha. I know Baker scored 18 points, but Adams, the reason why Minnehaha is in this game. Star at the line. Makes it first. Gets the bounce. And they're going to put the pressure on the Red Hawks now. It's a nine point lead. 
Miniha is going to have to get some steals or some stops on defense, and De La Salle, knowing there's no shot clock, will be content just to run out clock. Yeah, they don't want to get caught having to foul De La Salle near the end of the game. Halston's guard missed. Rebound goes to Starr, and she has numbers. Drives and scores. She's getting fired up here late in the game, we see. De La Salle making a huge run here at the most critical conjuncture of the game. Minnehaha running out of time. And another steal. De La Salle with a chance to put this game out of reach. You see Starr taking her time coming down court, killing more clock. 3.15, they have plenty of time to do that. And this is a team that's getting comfortable in their roles on offense. One thing they haven't lacked tonight was intensity. McNeil missed the three. And the rebound goes to Nipper. Just went past her right there. And Halston's guard draws the foul. Yeah, and we see Nipper who is down on the ground, but looks like she's okay. Fouls on Halston's guard. Fouls on Johnson, and De La Salle is going to call timeout with 2.58 remaining in the game, up by 11. Not a bad time to call a timeout. You have a comfortable lead, but you can't get complacent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, coach is going to tell them right here at the timeout that this is the uh, critical last three minutes of the game right here and that anything can happen. Because three minutes is enough time for them to uh, do something uh, amazing. Not even just miraculous, but just amazing. I've seen crazy things happen in the basketball game. Wait, one too many times. We'd like to remind you one more time to order a DVD copy of this program. Just click the purchase DVD link at grandstadium.tv or visit us at the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com to find out how you can purchase a DVD copy of this game and all our future games. Our next TV game will be January 11th, a Tuesday. Lakeville North and Eastview in a big South Suburban matchup. Lakeville North, the defending 4A champions. Eastview making a strong start to this season. That's going to be a great game. And so is this one. Yeah, I don't think Eastview will be super intimidated by Lakeville considering the way they've been playing recently. Now you mentioned 2.58 to go. Last three minutes are key. How does Minnehaha put pressure on the Islanders because the edge goes to De La Salle because they can simply run out clock? Yeah, I'm going to see uh, Minnehaha try to force De La Salle to make mistakes defensively as they've been trying to do all game. They've had some success doing it, but as of late, they need to find a stride on that again. And not a whole lot on the line, as we mentioned. Conference implications, perhaps. But because these two teams are in different classes, they're not going to see each other in state. So they're really just getting a test and evaluating themselves as much as they want to win this game. Well, I've had to wrap my head around this here in Minnesota because growing up in Texas, we don't uh, let teams from different classes play each other during the season at all. It's a rule that I like. Well, obviously, they're the same conference, so they're going to play each other. But it's a rule I like. Johnson missed her first shot, can't put down her second. And it's picked up by Halston's guard. It's a nine-point game. Minnehaha not out of this. But they need a big run, and they need it now. Steenstraw for three. Bozai, a huge three, cuts the lead to six. It's a two possession game. And that's all I was talking about. This is a very critical moment because there's over two minutes left in this game. And as we see, all it takes is a couple of mistakes and deal us off for it and we've got ourselves a different ball game. Can the Islanders get a response? They've dealt with adversity before. Can they finish out this time? Adonine again. 
the clutch player for the Islanders tonight. 54-46 the score. Steen Alston's guard in trouble. Jump ball, De La Salle with the possession arrow. Ritz. Out and no good, but Johnson with the rebound. New De La Salle player in. It's Mariah, Maria Phillips. It's back into safety of the hands of Starr and De La Salle. One thirty left. Minihas going to either have to force a stop or get a foul to stop the clock. And the foul comes. It's going to go against Halston's guard. And so free throws coming up. We'd like to remind you that coming up, we will have interviews with our players of the game to close out our evening. And at this point, uh, I'd say it's no contest to Donane, the player of the game for De La Salle, as Brits gets on the scoreboard and will be on the paper tomorrow. And for Mini Haha, Caitlin Adams. May not have the most points, but certainly the big presence inside. And just as I say that, she gets another board. And she just chucked that ball rail down the court. Perfect pass. De La Salle guarding the perimeter. They're going to give up as many twos as they want. Baker with the layup. And another timeout called. That's their last for Minnie Academy. Seven point game, 55 48. No Baker's put up 20, but you can't deny the contributions Adams has made tonight on defense. Yeah, and like I said, it's not about points. It's, as we see, it's about defense. And if uh, Minnehaha wants to get back in this game, they're going to need defense. And this rivalry is just as intense on the boys' side as well. Both De La Salle and Minnehaha on the short list for boys' basketball as well as girls. <laughs> I wonder how that game is going on right now. Probably just as close. We did a game here last year and it was close. Minnie didn't pull away till about two minutes to go in the game. We had about 15,000 ties. <laughs> but Minnie Haha, kind of under the radar in some ways. Last year they got crushed by Kennedy. Nobody thought they were gonna win that state title with the record they had. They had nine losses, but they were undefeated in the state tournament, which is when it counts. And that's how they snuck in and surprised everybody. And that's for any season of playoffs. If you have a hot streak at the right moment, then there's no stopping you, period. Teams will sometimes get complacent about the regular season records, and other teams will capitalize on that. Just like how teams that go and winning the championship going into the next season might get complacent as well. Had a little collision right there. Fouls on Halston's guard. Redhawks forced a foul. Double bonus now for the Islanders start the line. Yeah, and like I said, this is a situation that the Redhawks didn't want themselves right now in this game, having to foul and hoping that they miss because this doesn't bode well for uh, the Hawks. But you have to give credit to De La Salle's defense. They were forcing tough shots for Adams. They know she's a huge threat inside, and they haven't given her a lot of clean looks. They're off balance shots, not the best form. They're making her work. Star missed the front end and the back. No foul call. And it will stay with De La Salle, a huge break for the Islanders. That could have been a big chance for the Red Hawks to come back in. Yeah, if a player was in the way, Adams surely would have had it yet again, another rebound. And possibly even two more points for the Red Hawks. And Minnehaha forced to play foul and chase again. Sharp picks it up. I was going to say, records going out the window. You were talking about that. I think everyone remembers you and I in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> last year's tournament. I remember I covered the state tournament for girls basketball. It actually happened during the Hill-Murray-Benel-St. Margaret's final <laughs> as Johnson makes her first. 
Yeah, that uh, game busted a lot of people's brackets, including mine. And mine. But what, in terms of a, what pretty much was a sad sighting in terms of uh, Benilde and Hill Murray was that most of the media, myself included, we were in the media room watching you and I, Kansas, <laughs> because the Benilde-Hill Murray game was in the first half. I can't imagine the ratings for that game were high at that point. At least on the viewer and I's part, they will no longer just be known as the school that Kurt Warner played at. They'll also be known for that too as well. De La Salle is going to win this game. Improved to five and two on the year. Minnehaha will fall to three and two. And they should take uh, Minnehaha's place in the area rankings. In the Tri-Metro, looking at it, uh, they'll move into it. Yeah, in terms of wins, because they'll hold the tie there. Sharp gets a couple more, and De La Salle will just run out the clock here, and they'll come away with a big Tri-Metro Conference win on the road. 57-50 is the final. But a great game by both these teams, and game number two is going to be just as fun. Yeah, and it wasn't as uh, lopsided as they hoped it would be, but they rose to the occasion, and their defense held their ground for most of the game. So we will take a quick break and come back with our players of the game, Caitlin Adams from Minnehaha and Mariah Adonine for De La Salle. So don't go anywhere. We're not done yet. And we're here with Mariah Adonine, De La Salle's player of the game, leading all scores with 22 points tonight. Uh, Mariah, you just dominated inside. So how did you keep your momentum going? You know, we just really wanted to win. We had a lot of motivation, and we know this was a big game, so we wanted to give it our all. We've been practicing hard, so it's a team thing. It's definitely a team thing. So. This now marks your fourth straight win since the Lakeville North game. That was a 35-point loss. A lot of crazy things happened around that time. How has the team responded, and how does this contribute to it? You know, I definitely would say that Lakeville North definitely prepared us for these upcoming games. And, you know, from that game, we just thought that we could do better than what we were doing. So, you know, it just starts in practice. We were just working hard, and we know how good we are. So, you know, we're playing it on the court. That's what we do. So, This is a key tri-metro game for you. And so what does that mean early on in the season as you, you take a little break and then uh, go back at it in January? I mean, we're just going to go hard the whole season. That's what we have to do, and that's what we have to keep in mind. No matter who we're playing, we always have to have that same mindset. So, so despite playing uh, in your next match, playing uh, Brooklyn Center, who hasn't won the game this season, mm -hmm. how are you all going to keep the momentum going over this long break between now and then? Like I said, we would always keep the same mindset. We never underestimate our team, our opponents. So, so we just got to keep going hard no matter who we're playing. and. We're going to do good, so. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with us, and thanks. good luck. Who knows? We might see you again, perhaps, at Target Center. <laughs> Thank you. Mariah Adonine, our player of the game for De La Salle, will have the Minnehaha Academy player of the game in a moment. And we're here with the Minnehaha Academy player of the game, Caitlin Adams. Uh, you're going to be going off to uh, Liberty in a few months, but you still have a season to finish up here. What did you learn from tonight's game playing against your tri-metro rival? that it's always a good game and that we have a lot to work on. We have places to go. I thought we did really well for our first night out. And it's always a great challenge to play De La Salle and it just shows like what we need to work on, what we, where we need to go from go to from here. And um, you know, I'm just, it's the beginning of the season. So we have a lot of time to improve, so. And what did you learn, I guess yourself, because you had a big role in tonight's game, keeping Minnehaha Academy in it. You only had 11 points, but you had a lot of rebounds, a lot of blocks, and uh, you just seemed very comfortable on the defensive side of the ball. And so how has that uh, developed for you since last year? Um, it's just kind of something like, it's just like the role I need, and I know I need to fill. Um, we have a lot of girls that can score, but defense wins games. And I think everyone knows that and um, I just try to help everyone out, you know, the middle. <laughs> I stop it in the middle and they stop it on the outside, so. And with a game against North Branch on Tuesday and with tonight's result, how do you think the team's going to respond with such a turnaround from this game to the next? I so think we're going to come back strong, really strong. So 
I'm excited for it. What are you looking for? Obviously, you'd like to have another state title before you close your high school career, but what else are you looking to do academically, athletically, just anything before uh, you uh, hang up the Red Hawks jersey for the last time? I just want to finish strong. I want to go out with a mark and just not look back, not have any regrets. Just go out and said I did my best and yeah, that's it. And is there anybody you want to say hi to that might be watching online or on television? Um, Mom and Dad and Grandpa and the whole family and Minnehaha and yeah. Covering all the bases, I yeah. see. <laughs> Everyone, thank you. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. And, uh, you. hey, you fooled us once before. Who knows? We might see you winning the state title again uh, and uh, doing it to us a second time. You never know. In March, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Caitlin. And Caitlin Adams, player of the game for Minnehaha Academy. That wraps up our coverage here. De La Salle wins 57-50, but a big evaluation and early test for the season as it continues to March. For Sean williams wyke and everyone here at TSB Television, I'm Mike Beaton. We'll see you next time. Thank you.